Good morning. My name is Paul Monis of Paul Monis PC, and myself, uh, along with my uh, colleague Courtney Keel, have filed a case in uh, Ventura County against the Thatcher School. Our firm specializes in cases of sexual abuse, uh, representing individuals um, both in California and around the nation. Um, in this matter, um, sitting with me today is Jennifer Bruno, Jennifer Christensen Bruno, I should say. And Ms. Bruno will speak after I address a few short comments. This case has already been filed uh, against the Thatcher School, and it's been filed pursuant to legislation in California that was enacted several years ago that gives people, adults basically, um, uh, three years to file a case against individuals and the institutions in which they were abused. And she um, uh, filed this case pursuant to a statute AB 218. Ms. Verno attended the Thatcher School from 1992 through 1996. She met the person who sexually abused her, Mr. Freiburg, from in 1993, in 1993. And in 1996, she was sexually abused by Mr. Freiburg uh, on a number of occasions. John Freiburg was a teacher at the school for about a 10 year period. Um, Ms. Fry, M M Ms. Jennifer, Ms. Christensen Verno, or Jennifer as I'll call her, um, suffered greatly as she will tell you as a result of this sexual abuse. In the typical press conference that I've done over the years representing untold numbers of victims of sexual abuse around the country and in California, typically the lawyer does most of the talking. And what's gonna be different about this conference today is that my client, Jennifer, um, who we are very proud of uh, for her bravery and coming forward is going to be making a statement and to the extent we uh, allow her to answer certain questions from, from, from you and the media. Um, it's important to note in this case, and what's unique about this case is that the law, uh, the law firm that, in, that the, the school, Thatcher School, hired Munger, Tol Munger uh, Tolls Olson to investigate allegations of sexual abuse. This is fairly typical of large private institutions, private schools, where there's been allegations of sexual abuse. In this case, Munger told Olson, uh, pursuant to a request by Thatcher School, published a report in June of 2021. And in that report, they interviewed scores of teachers and former students, including Ms. Ms. Uh, Christian and Bruno Jennifer. I'm used to calling her uh, Ms. Jennifer, but I'm being a little formal here, but they interviewed Jennifer as well. Um, what occurred uh, in this investigation was not just uncovering information that, uh, as we allege in our complaint, that John Freiborg had acted inappropriately sexually and uh, engaged in sexual misconduct with a number of students, but other teachers as well. So this was not just one teacher, but rather, uh, as the report reflects, um, a number of teachers at the school and the report also reflects that the administration at Thatcher School was aware of and should have been aware of a number of these uh, incidents. I'm going to just read for you briefly um, from the report, which is also contained in our complaint, which is available at the press release, about what the report found concerning Mr. Freiburg's uh, history at the school. So according to this report, prior to coming to the school, the Thatcher School, Freiburg was a teacher and soccer coach at the Governor's Academy, a boarding school in Massachusetts, where he worked with the future head of school at the Thatcher School, uh, Mr. Michael Mulligan. 
According to the report, Michael Mulligan um, found that uh, said that Mr. Freiberg had an inappropriate relationship with a senior on the girls' soccer team at the Governor's Academy. The June 2020 report also stated that Mulligan told us that he discovered the relationship when he noticed Freiburg and the senior girl spending too much time together. And then Mr. Mulligan reported it to the school. The report also found that Mr. Mulligan reported the inappropriate relationship of the female student to the headmaster of the academy. And Mr. Freiburg was asked to leave the governor's academy as a result of the report of Mr. Mulligan. A few years later, Mr. Freiburg was hired as a teacher at Thatcher as the associate director of development and a girls varsity coach. At that time, Mr. Mulligan had previously come to the Thatcher School. It's very important to look at this timeline. So Mr. Mulligan came to the school and then Mr. Thatcher came to the school. At the time, both Mulligan, who was the assistant headmaster for student affairs, often referred to as the dean of students according to the report, and another faculty member told the investigators from Munger told Olson that the headmaster, Bill Wyman, knew about Freiburg's inappropriate relationship with the girl at the Governor's Academy. It's extreme, this is an extremely important fact, that there was knowledge that Mr. Freiburg had an inappropriate relationship before coming to the Thatcher School. According to this report, again, in reference to the inappropriate relationship at the Governor's Academy, Freiburg stated that this matter was fully explored, or the or the school stated that the matter with that the Thatcher School Thatcher stated the matter of Freiburg's prior allegations were, uh, were investigated thoroughly, and he was then hired at the Thatcher School. According to the report in June 2021, during the interview, Mr. Mulligan stated that he supported Mr. Freiburg's hiring at the school, even though he had this prior history. And according to the report, Mr. Uh, Mulligan said that it was inconceivable to him that Mr. Freiburg would again, quote, make the same mistake that he had made before. As we allege in our complaint, all of this happened before my client, Jennifer, enrolled at the school. She enrolled at the school in 1992. The abuse happened in 1996. Now, after several complaints against Mr. Freiburg surfaced in 1997, the Thatcher School quietly let Mr. Freiburg go. He was able to sail off into the sunset without any significant <clears throat> consequences. And no further, to the best of our knowledge, no further investigation was done. Had Mr. Freiburg not been hired at the school, Jennifer would not be sitting next to me today. It's now my honor to introduce Jennifer Christensen Verna. Hi. Just take your time, okay? Okay. Well, as we have established, my name is Jennifer Christensen Verno, and I'm a graduate of the Thatcher School. I graduated in 1996. Thatcher is a boarding school that claims excellence in all aspects of boarding high school by raising self confident, resilient, compassionate, ambitious young people through the principles of honor, fairness, kindness, and truth. I am not here because of what they claim to be or claim to produce. I am here because I am a victim survivor of child sexual assault perpetrated on the Thatcher campus by my high school soccer coach, teacher, college advisor, John Freiborg. John was hired in 1987, nearly 10 years before he assaulted me. He was hired despite admitting to school administrators that he had, quote, dated a female high school soccer player at his previous 
High School, the Governor's Academy, where he was both employed as a teacher and a soccer coach. His employment was ultimately terminated at that school and due to this inappropriate due to this inappropriate relationship. At Thatcher, he established himself as a great soccer coach and charismatic leader within the school. When I arrived at Thatcher at the young age of 14, I was desperate to find my place in this world that I fully trusted and believed in. I was a successful soccer player prior to attending Thatcher and held on to this identity as a way to define myself in this new community. By my senior year, I had been a varsity soccer player for three years and believed and entrusted no one more than John Freiburg. In my senior year, at a most desperate and struggling moment, I went to John Freiburg to seek help. I looked to him for guidance and care, trusting completely in his ability to help and support me. But this was not the case. He took this trust and belief and used it against me as a tool to perpetrate the most heinous crime of sexual violence against my 17 year old self. Frozen by shock and fear, I sat and lay there terrified as my world shattered in and around me, never to be the same girl again. I did not report his abuse directly to the administration at the time because I was embarrassed and fearful of what would happen to me if I did report the abuse. I knew I could never bear my young soul to the very community that told me to trust and love and obey this man. One year after my assault, I found out from the immense strength of three other young victim survivors of John Pride work that he was asked to quietly leave the school. And the school could pretend that it had not destroyed the lives, selves, and futures of the young girls. John Freiburg allegedly abused. The problems caused by John Freiburg's sexual assaults of me were compounded by the silence and inaction of the school. I lost the sense that I could expect I would be protected from harm, the security of living in a community where I could trust that if I were to be harmed, I would be helped. I lost my community, and the world necessary for coherent self-formation. He was protected and I was abandoned, cast aside. The school's silence condoned his actions and ignored the existence of the devastating pain and destruction left upon me and the other victims. I am here today for myself and all the other victim survivors who were sexually assaulted by John Freiburg and other perpetrators at Thatcher. This school was my home and my family. For many, many years after leaving the physical campus, I believed that it was my duty and obligation to not tarnish the image of the school, but to do so rendered me and my experience completely invisible. I am here to shed my shame of the assault because it was not my fault. He was a 40 year old adult, and I was a 17 year old child seeking help, guidance love, approval, and acceptance. I'm here to bring my assault and pain into the light because if we as humanity and communities can acknowledge and really listen to the pain and destruction of such crimes and assaults, then we can no longer turn a blind eye to such perpetration. Perhaps every teacher, administrator, member of a school community can hear and see this vulnerable population that deserves protecting and know they must act because the destruction of the many young lives lie in their ability to see and acknowledge such assaults. We, the victim survivors, must be advocated for, supported, and helped on our journey to healing. Perpetrators must not be protected and hidden. Perpetrators must be held accountable for their crimes because sexually assaulting a teenager is a crime, not a mistake, not a lack of judgment, it is a crime and deserves to be treated as such. I filed my case to hold the school accountable for the crimes they allowed to happen and their failure to protect the children from such crimes. 
I have suffered every day since the day John Freiburg first sexually assaulted me on the Thatcher campus. I have never been the same. The school must put the welfare of every student above the reputation of the school and the perpetrators themselves. And if and when they cannot, they must be held accountable. Finally, I am here today, not as an anonymous Jane Doe, but using my real name, Jennifer Christensen Verno, because I want to help give a voice to those who understandably are too embarrassed, shameful, or fearful of using their real name. I want to pull back the curtain and come out of the shadows to state that victim survivors of sexual abuse will no longer be silent. Thank you. I just want to um, uh, add again, um, before we take questions, how unique it is in California. For those of you who've covered this, you will know that the vast majority, 90, over 90%, uh, proceed as John Doe's or Jane Doe's for very legitimate reasons because the pain of sexual abuse and the long-term consequences are so harmful that they can't and too, are too embarrassed to use their real name. So it's a real step forward for Jennifer to come forward this way. We'd also urge, we know that um, this report that was uh, issued by the Thatcher School through the law firm of Munger, Munger Toll Dolson, um, really detailed many, many, many victims of sexual abuse. And to date, uh, we know that there have been very few cases actually filed uh, in addition to ours. And we also urge that anybody who has any information about Mr. Freiburg or about any of the incidents that's related to our complaint to come forward to contact our office. Um, in this case, the, uh, this, as, as many of you may know, the Ventura County uh, Sheriff's Office did a, a, a long uh, investigation here. And as of the present date, because of the statute of limitations, um, primarily um, no criminal actions, uh, to the best of our knowledge, have been filed uh, at this time yet. Um, so now we'd be ready to, you know, take uh, uh, any questions, and I'm sure the person who's helping you monitor our work here can step, help set that up. Okay, just bear with us for a minute here. It's, thank you. You want to come around the other side and do it? But yet, we don't see anybody online. yet. Okay. Um, we don't see anybody yet. Okay. And then we have a member here. Where, where are you from? I'm with the Ventura County Star. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get to you. Just and said, let us figure this thing out. Okay, you're, you're live. Yeah, thanks. So we should be able to hear people if they'd like to unmute. Okay, um, you can. You'll be able okay. to hear them. So if people want to unmute and and ask uh, questions now. Do we have any questions? I don't hear anything, Jennifer. Jennifer, Richard Winter of the Los Angeles Times. Hello, Richard. Good morning. I want to ask you, how did you learn what happened when you eventually got some call a few years ago from probably someone from Munga Tolls, or how did it come about that they made that call to you? Let me repeat that question because it was a, uh, not everybody heard it. How did it come about that Jennifer was contacted by Munger Tolls 
and she is in the report, and she'll tell you who she is in the report. Um, but why don't you uh, an answer Mr. Uh, Winden's question from the Times? Yeah. Um, so uh, I I learned that they were doing a report from a, a a classmate who was also assaulted at the school, um, and she shared with me. So um, and they reached. I reached out to them, and they um, did an interview with me on I'm student D and under John Freiborg's section there. Um, okay. And when you were at the school, after the, the horrific incident you had with him, were you aware that there were, and when, what was the level of awareness among students that there was kind of not just Freiburg, but other incidents with teachers and staff? Um. I think there is a large there is a large level of awareness. I can remember coming um in as a freshman being told that there was um some situation between a soccer coach and his student. Um it was not Freiburg that I was aware of. Um there was just a lot of like, but we were always encouraged to be really close with our teachers. They would invite us over all the time. They had us in their homes. Um, so uh, my junior year, there were um, like rumors going around about other students. Um, and the, there was always the joke that, you know, the women's or the girls soccer team was um, Fry's girls. Um, that they would refer to us as. So, okay. thank you. Okay. Any other questions? You have a. You want to ask a question? Yeah. And you were from the. I'm with the mentor Ken Stein. Sure. Yeah. Um, in terms of the current. Is legal action? Has there been communication amongst other peers or alumni from school about leveling like a sort of class action lawsuit or any type of like? Have there been what now? Any type of like communication? Yeah. Yeah. As far as we're aware, there's no uh, class action. I, I think um, there was a lawsuit filed a couple of two or three weeks ago. Um, I, I think that, and we don't know about this, but there may be um, other ones, but considering the number of people who were mentioned in this report, it's quite surprising. I've been involved in um, uh, private school cases uh, involving sexual abuse by staff all over the United States, and um, the numbers of lawsuits uh that have been filed have been numerous in a number of those other schools uh, that I could think of and it's here as far as we know now the statute is not closed yet but um who knows what will happen so can you talk a little bit more about the decision Jennifer to put your name with the allegations yeah um I think it's uh when I first thought about uh, reporting, the idea was it would completely just knock the wind out of me and render me um, unable to function in daily life. And as I went through the process, as I first reported to, MT, to, to MTO, I began to realize that that my the story of abuse of what happened to me was still controlled by the school because it was hired by the school and that they were going to be able to determine what happened to it. Um, and so um, I really just fought against that and really struggled to um, to step out. And um, I think it's my I think it's my final step to say it wasn't my fault. Like I think for a long time I thought it I believed it was. Um, and can I speak to the culture of not reporting? Sure, you could talk about that in uh, general. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's 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 a why why there aren't more complaints. I, I think there's is a real culture of to not report, to not share the family secrets, to not bring a bad name, and that's 
been the guilt that I still carry with me. Yeah. Do we have follow-up questions? Okay. Yeah, Paul, can I ask you a question? It's Richard Winton again. Yes, where, where it said I, I just glanced at the report. It says Freiburg went on to work at other locations and is now retired. Do you have any idea where he went after this and I do. any sense of what happened with him? I yeah. do. No. Okay. Yeah. No. We. we yeah. Um. We. We. We don't. We. We have some information, but I'd probably rather not discuss that uh, during the during the press conference at this point. Okay. Um. Is there anybody else? Can you hear me? This is Kimberly with the Ohio Valley News. Kimberly Rivers. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um. I was wondering if. Mr. Mulligan is named at all or being considered at all as part of the claim in regards to, you know, facilitating Freiburg coming to Thatcher. Yeah, he's not. He's not named in our in, in our in our lawsuit. Okay. Um. And then Jennifer, um, I was wondering if has I know that there are groups on social media of alumni and students that are creating support for victims and folks as yourself who have tried to find ways to come forward and talk. Um, I did reporting for another paper um, with a victim who came forward but declined to use her name. I'm wondering if you're in communication with those groups and what the response is to you coming forward in such an open and public way. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, all the social media accounts that were uh, connected to Thatcher have gone silent. I actually have tried to reach out to them, and they um, have all not responded to me. Um, as of uh, when, when 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 once Blo when Blossom left the school, um, they all went silent. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, any other questions out there? It's weird. We usually, in my my press conference experience over the years, you can see and big big people out in the audience, but it's more electronic now. So, if we have further follow up questions that come up, can we contact you, Mr. Mons? Yeah, or? sure. You can contact uh, us here, and we'd be glad to put you in touch. Uh, we could. Uh, Jennifer would be willing to answer any questions. Uh, you know, within the confines of what I could let her answer and um you know uh our 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 i would urge you to look at our complaint which is fairly detailed um and it quotes extensively from the report um you know th this notion of using of schools using reports is uh gained a lot of popularity about 10 years ago um and now it has uh really uh, become sort of the uh de rigueur for uh, private schools. Uh, and Thatcher, you know, what's significant about this case too, Thatcher is clearly uh, one of the most prestigious uh, private boarding schools in California, if not the country. And uh, this report reflects a uh, uh, issue of uh, dealing with sexual abuse for um, for decades at the school or, 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 the, or, the, or the instances of sexual abuse there. So, or sexual misconduct as they call it in the report. But we'd be glad to answer your questions. Sure. Okay, I think that that's probably it. Um, if anybody has any further questions, uh, you know how to contact us, and we appreciate uh, everybody's uh, time. Thank you very much, and we'll be available for questions later if you have any of them. Thank you.